hi my friends <laughs> and a special to my crochet friends I know you've been on pins and needles Jay where are you where are you well you know things in life takes time <laughs> but I'm back and I'm back with a little surprise and I hope it's gonna be worth the wait uh, you know while I was getting everything ready well how's everyone how are you doing? I hope things are well. I hope things are getting cooler. They're getting cooler here. So you can see I feel better. I've got my little bounce. But this time of year, apparently, this is the time of year that I have allergies. I don't have allergies in the spring. Mine, I have fall allergies. So that means stopped up sinuses, head congestion only at night. You know, so I don't know. So I have to oh, go through all that throat dripping and all of that. But... So far, you know, I've just been staying clear, and uh, I've just got to get ready to get my flu shot. <laughs> I tell you, it, I for years just thought, oh, flu shot, oh, I don't know. I'm telling you, it's amazing what knowledge, <laughs> how knowledge can change your life. After I started getting the flu shot, oh, my life was so much better. I hadn't had that problem. I hadn't had been sick. It's been better. Like I said, I get that little drip. But at, even with the flu shot, it's not as bad. So, thank goodness for a little knowledge, isn't it? <laughs> well, okay. So, I don't have anything, you know, I don't have anything to show. I don't have no stash. I got so much stash here. I, I need to just, <laughs> I don't know what I need to do. <laughs> I'm running out of room, people. <laughs> But I did run out and buy a few little things, uh, but nothing really to write home about. Because I was so excited to, because I've been working on, this is going to be Jay's Crochet, the Babbling Brook Lace Sweater. What do you think of the intro music? Did you like it? When I heard that music, I thought, that's exactly what I thought about. I thought, that sounds like a Babbling Brook. <laughs> it's amazing how you can just come up with this stuff. Oh, and if I had to come up with that name, I probably couldn't, wouldn't have thought of it. But just sitting there by myself and, you know, just listening, going through different songs, trying to find something that I might, you know, enjoy using or that it, you know, would kind of showcase my project. That song jumped out at me. And I says, that's it. Jay's Crochet the Babbling Brook Lace Sweater. And here it is. All right, now let's see. I hope I'm I hope I'm on camera good. And let me show you. It's just like a nice little go-to vest sweater. Uh, you'll have to look at the pictures. The back is just done in kind of a crochet. That's where you get your measurements from. Has a built-in front border edge. And then, do you remember uh, my? Um, it was a variegated sweater called Where the Wildflowers Grow. And uh, I did some really pretty trimming on the edge. And so this will have, uh, this has some of the same trimming. I didn't do the crab stitch on this one. But I tell you, I have another surprise. Not on this video. We need to get this one so that you can start working. Just like I said at the end of the video, uh, you'll see at the end of the video, I want to stop this one as part one so that you, because you have a lot of work to do. And, uh, but in the meanwhile, you know, of course, you know, sometimes Jay likes to work up another one or, or get your opinion on something. So, uh, but that will be in the next one. So, I will take you step by step of this. This, the idea came from this style. I'm, I'm just, this is my, you know, I'm claiming this little style because we're going to do it again and, uh, you know, change the, the the stitch or you know the look of it but uh for my knitters i did um jay's knit a honeysuckle lace sweater or something like that. i can't remember the real name but uh, but it was a honeysuckle it reminded me of honeysuckle the the yarn and and the lace so i thought well why not since that's a style that looks good on my body you know and that's what i'm i'm about not so much you know i i just I'm just not in the... Look, 
she's just always been a rebel. She just can't be in the group. She just, I try. I try to be in the box. <laughs> just, <laughs> that's what they used to call me at work. You remember? Hey, my friends watching from work, remember? Jay, you're just a rebel. <laughs> I was always, they'd say one thing and I'd say, well, but. And they go, oh, mercy, there she goes. <laughs> Jay, you're just a rebel. So I try to stay in the box and I just can't, people. I just have to, you know, I'm just, I've had to just stand on my own for as long as I can, can remember. I'm 72 years old. And I've had to just stand on my own and just go, you know, I try to go with the flow, but sometimes the flow just don't want to go with me. <laughs> so I just thought, well, why don't I just, just try to make different versions. Don't, don't just get in there. Just, just do what you want to do. If you want to make another one of the same style, we'll just do that until we get tired and then we'll find something else. So right now, like I said, but I have a surprise after this one because I'm going to need your opinion. You have a you you can make a decision <laughs> once I show it to you. But first, you have to get started on this. This is made out of because I saw you guys buying it and I was over at the Walmart buying groceries, tending to my own business. <laughs> and I went down the yarn aisle. Our stores we're, we're living in a nice, really nice area, but they don't keep a lot of yarn. In fact, they've compressed the yarn aisle. You know, they remodeled, they're remodeling a lot of the Walmart stores. And now the eyes are, they have one nice long wall, but that's about it. And I could go to other Walmarts to check, but it's not that big a thing because I buy most of my yarn at Joann's or, you know, at Hobby Lobby's or Michael's, something like that. But I went over on that yarn aisle, and I'm telling you, right as I walked up, I saw that yarn. I said, oh, that's what everybody's using, that mandala ombre. I had no clue. Like I'm going to share with you, how it would crochet up or how it felt. It turned out to be a very nice yarn. I'm really impressed with it. And I like the, the way the colors just fade. Now I got this one because I could wear it with, I don't wear jeans, but I do wear sweatpants and, um, you know, capri pants. And I have a blue pair, so this would be very nice. Don't you think? Blue and blue. And then I've got my little... Uh, you know, my little shoes, either dress or sport wear. I can wear with it. But the main thing is, in the as the weather starts really turning colder, I wear a lot of turtlenecks. You know, so you, I'll be done with these little shells as when it gets real cold, and I wear long sleeves, you know, long sleeve turtlenecks or the mock turtleneck. And uh, so this would be perfect. It will go right over it. It's something that I can just slip on. I think you're going to like this one. And guess what? Two rows. <laughs> Gee, hey, am I becoming the queen of easy? Easy peasy. Two rows. You know, sometimes I'll I'll take a stitch. and You don't have to use all the rows in, in a particular stitch. You can manipulate it and change it. But this was just one I made up. I just sat there and I thought, well, I don't feel like looking through stitch books. I'm tired. I want to just kind of relax. And my motto, when I don't know what to do, just do what you know. I know how to how I used to make afghans. And I just sat there and I started making like, pretending like I was going to crochet an afghan. And I just use very simple, like the granny square stitch or the three double crochets. That's it. And then I use my, you know, how I fit things and design things. So I'm going to take you step by step. I hope you enjoy this. Remember, this is part one. You've got a lot of crocheting to do. By the time you get to a point, and I'll, you know, you'll know where to stop, then I will come back on with part two and uh, get your opinion or your help on what I'm trying to, um, to add to it. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, thank you so much for waiting. I hope it's worth your while. I hope you give it a try. You're my crochet buddies. What am I going to say? I just can't wait. And of course, I can't wait to see what kind of yarn or the colors you pick out. I want to see all the different shades and colors or, or even your ideas.
for this really pretty Jay's Crochet, the Babylon Brook Lace Sweater. I need that music on. <laughs> I should have my son play that music. Maybe I haven't played that. Play me out. That's what I'll do. I'll just get him to play that music out. Who would have thought? <laughs> oh, my friend, they're probably thinking, whatever happened to, you know, Jay used to work with, you know she's dancing on the YouTube. <laughs> Tell you, you just never know where life's going to take you, or when you get there, you know what blessings going to be there to welcome you. So let's get started. Back in just a minute. Okay, so I want to get right into the overview because <laughs> I'm excited, and uh, I'll have some further things to tell you as we go along. But right off the bat, let's get into the overview of my Jay's Crochet, the Babbling Brook Lace Sweater. And as you can see, as soon as I saw this color, you know, at first I thought, hmm, blue jeans or denim. But then, for some reason, I thought of water. So, I was at, I was just buying groceries, and uh, I was at... Um, my local Walmart and because I had seen several people on YouTube have bought this mandala ombre it's not something I had ever bought uh, and I did call Joann's first to see if they had it before I went tracking over there they uh, it didn't show up on the computer but when I was in Walmart I saw this so I went ahead and I like this particular color you can see it's a beautiful like I said uh, more of a denim look and uh, so I went ahead and got three cakes of it and the name of this color is really Harmony but like I say it has a denim vibe to me <laughs> so I got home well I just kind of put this away I didn't think about it right away but once I decided I to try to use it I had no idea where I was going with it but I thought denim, casual, easy stitch. I don't want anything fancy. Don't need a shawl. And uh, uh, so I looked back at, you know, I just finished a sweater, a lacy sweater, last month's project. And, uh, oh, the honeysuckle lace sweater. And uh, so at the time I thought, why don't I do like a crochet version? It can't be the same stitch because that's knitted and this is crochet. But I thought, well... Maybe I can use some of the rules or some of the ideas that I did to make that one. And this is what I came up with. All right, let me show you how it starts. It is done in one piece, just like the honeysuckle lace sweater, the knitted one. And we start in the back. On the knitted sweater, of course, I had a center back section of just knit stitches. Well, on this one, I have a center back section of uh, double crochets. And then on, I don't know which side, let's see which side that I can show, this side, okay. And then as you crochet up towards your shoulders with the lace, that's on the edge. And then of course it makes, you come over the shoulders and down one front and voila, you have lace on the back uh, of the side of the body and on the front. And of course, once you sew it up, it will make the arm space, just like on the honeysuckle lace sweater. And this is a section where you will determine uh, uh, the size, how I tried to come up with how to make your size. And like I said, you go up and you can see everything is already in the formula, the working formula that I worked up. As you come over the front, let me turn it back around, come over the shoulders, then you will wind up with a beautiful, now I'm sitting in the window, but the window is closed and I still hear the crickets. Oh, mercy. <laughs> it's so hot. Oh, so, but as you come over, it makes its own front edging right there. Can you see it? Really nice. Really nice and neat and clean. And then, of course, I have gone back when I finished it and did a couple of rows of even uh, some um, 
extended single crochets to make it even nicer and smoother. So this is an overview. So I hope you're excited to give this a try. It's nothing but double crochets and chains. And uh, hmm, just a just a good crochet, just a nice piece to have, just a fun way to just sit back and and uh, you know. In fact, when I started this, I really started out. I don't know. I don't know if I was going to do an afghan, but I, that's how I kind of started when I was trying to find the stitch. I couldn't find the stitch. I wasn't going to look through all the books, so I that's why I came up with a simple. Uh, granny style you know the three double crochets chain two or three or whatever and then three double crochets that was the whole idea it started out like well, what would I do if I was making an afghan and one thing led to another so I just wanted to give you a quick overview now we want to get into um, I've given you the yarn oh I used a US crochet hook I and I'll go over it when we do the stitch, but I used an eye hook. And I've shown you the yarn, so there's nothing to do but just show you this simple stitch. You can't even make it up this easy and quick to make this beautiful, nice, easy, relaxed sweater. Mandala Ombre, this is Jay's Crochet, the Babbling Brook Lace Sweater. Back in just a minute. All right, so the next thing is, let's talk numbers. Now, I've worked out and, you know, kind of, you know, worked the math. So, we won't get into heavy math on this project because it's really nice and simple. And uh, since I don't produce written patterns, you know, I have this thing that I started, you know, how I taught myself. And I call it working my formulas. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's... To me, it's just easier to just invite you over, put something in the oven. We get us ourselves a big mug of coffee, <laughs> put on some good music or something, and just sit back and enjoy the fellowship and work on our projects together. So this way on YouTube, I can have a whole lot of people over my house. <laughs> so, all right. So now... Getting back to the numbers. So this is uh, a way to help you just to kind of find a place to start. This is Jay's size chart help. It's just the sizes and I've already worked the math out. I, I always start myself as the example or the sample, you know, I, I, as the example of, of um, how, the, how the project or how I want the particular thing I'm crocheting or knitting to fit. And... Uh, I represent the one X, at least one X, maybe moving on up, but at least one X. <laughs> so from there, I can take the math and go down or up trying to figure out, trying to come up with some numbers. And I hope that you can uh, find one that will work with, for you. So for instance, on Jay's size chart here, this is my little size chart help. I don't know if I should lay it. Maybe if I just leave it laying down, not pick it up. There we go. All right, on the size chart, <clears throat> small to medium size. I don't know. I'm. You just kind of have to know if you're small or kind of medium, you know. You're going to size it from the center back. The center back of this uh, crocheted sweater. You will need 30 double crochets. That will give you... Now, that's not from side to side of your body. It's what it says the center of the back and then we'll put um, you know the lace or the repeats on the sides so small to medium 30 double crochets you know you're just gonna be writing this down or you can stop the pause it at any time uh, because I'm gonna show you the schematic in just a minute alright from large to 1x you know if you really you're out of the medium you know you're large <laughs> You know you're pushing over one X or whatever. Okay, that's my size. That's what I, it seems to fit me really nice for, for the numbers I have. I'm going to use 38 double crochets. 38 for large to one X. 2X to 3X, 46 double crochets right in the center back. Right in the center back. And say 4X, uh, you can add eight more to this number, so I had 54. 
Now, that's where you kind of say, well, let's, you decide, on, okay, that's, I'm going to try, Jay, I'm going to try the, the 1X, or I'm going to try the 2X. Okay, now, here is the schematic. The schematic is simply a drawing, a visual, you know, I'm a visual learner, and I share everything in a visual way. That's just how it is. <laughs> so, the visual so that you can kind of glance and see at a moment at any time where you are or what you're doing. All right, in crocheting, I have a long line. See that long line there? Well, that simply represents the long chain. I don't count chains if I don't have to. I usually just kind of measure it up to my body and then go ahead and make it maybe, um, you know, a couple of feet longer than what I need. It's a long chain. And the purpose of that. You know, that's all I, it, like I said, as long as I've been doing it, and when I first came on YouTube, a lot of people were like, oh, that's just not right. <laughs> I had a lot of people just, you know, but, but you know, and I just kept on just driving in my own lane, and so far, a lot of people are getting it. So, it just, if since I'm designing this, or we're designing this, I don't know how many chains, I don't know your body, you don't know, my, I don't know you like that. <laughs> so... But if I, if I can just get you to a long chain, so from one side of your waist to the, across the front of your body to the opposite side, and maybe a couple of feet more. It's just yarn, people. We're not paying that much. I can understand if it was, you know, high-end yarn. All right, so on this chain, once we get it, and which, is, which we will, I'll be demonstrating, I simply put <clears throat> where I want on this chain. So, for instance... On this chain or schematic, a drawing of what we can visually see, of what we're going to be working. I Everyone will have a border of three. That's what that B represents, a border of three. Well, here's a border of three on this side. All right, in the center, there's a the center back. That's where you're going to put which of these sizes you're going to be working. I'm working large to 1X, so it's 38 double crochets. So 38 double crochets go there. All right, everyone on this particular project will get six repeats of the lace pattern. Everyone, every size, everywhere, <laughs> you just do six repeats. If you like, if you're a person that just says, oh, Jay, I'm just, I like my things to really be oversized or whatever, then you can add one more repeat to this. Instead of six, you could have seven. Working as I demonstrate and as I'm sharing, we're going to use six repeats. Now, as you work this stitch up to, we're starting at the very bottom like I shared in the uh, overview. We work from the bottom to the top of the shoulders. Once we get up near the top of the shoulders, however many inches you want that to be. I only know inches, but centimeters or inches, however many. Uh, then we will start to separate each front. You'll have a right front and a left front and of course your neck. Now I suggest for the next neck stitches that we need to reserve or you know to leave. Small to medium you'll probably need 14 double crochets and I'm going to show you all of this. I'm just giving you some numbers so you can have this so you can make your own schematic. Put your own numbers in. For all the larger sizes, like me, we're going to have 16 double crochets. So that way you know what's on your schematic just for you. And like I said, pretty much everything is equal except right here in the center back and the neck. So, we have a, you have, you can choose a pick a size, what you think you're close to. You can draw up the schematic. And the only thing now is to get ready to do, show you the simple two row uh, repeat stitch. Easy peasy. You're going to love this. <laughs> All right, so I'll be right back with my little practice yarn and we will get started. All right, I'm back and I have made my sample chain. I made a chain longer than what I thought I could need it for this sample. You will take your chain and take your body and you'd make you'd make a chain to go from one side across the front to the opposite side and I just go ahead and double it just like that 
That way you know you have enough. All right, so I have a long chain for this project. And we're going to get ready to work our two rows. This is going to be row one. This is the right side of, of these two rows. Now, to get started, and again, I am using a USI crochet hook or a 5.50 millimeter. You can use any brand. I don't. It's just whatever you might like. But I'm just using an eye hook. This is a clover. All right, so I have my chain, my long chain, <laughs> and how uh, the way I start on our schematic, it says B3, which represents the border. So for me, I will skip three chains, three, skip three chains from the hook, one, two, three, and in the fourth chain from the hook, I'm going to make a double crochet. In the fourth chain from the hook, one, two, three, right here. Fourth chain. All right. Let me see how, I look, how it's looking on the camera. I think you'll be able to see just fine. All right. Now, in the next chain, I need another double crochet. There is my three stitch border. One, two, three. Right there. Now, if you've been crocheting with me long enough, you know that when I I, uh, I like to separate things, I call it making a, a separation line or an eyelet row. I chain one, and then I skip one on the bottom. Now, in the next chain, after I skip the one on the bottom, I want you to give me a double crochet. A double crochet in the next chain. That's two. And one more in the next chain. So I have three double crochets. Just real simple. Just like when I was, you know, looking for, well, I really didn't look for a stitch. I, I was just too tired. I have a lot of stitch books. But when I was sitting down trying to think, when I got the yarn, because I was so excited because I, I bought the yarn y'all had, I saw, you know, a lot of you had bought. I said, well, what would I do if I was going to make a napkin? So this is how I just started this stitch. <laughs> Alright, so I have three double crochets right there. Now, chain three. One, two, three. Skip three on the bottom. One, two, three. And then repeat the three double crochets in the next three chains. Just that simple. Just like a granny square. Kind of my little take on that, I guess. So one double crochet and then go to the next chain. Double crochet. I think I'll just throw my yarn on the floor, maybe. It's not doing me any good up here, okay? And then one more. So, now here is the repeat. Right there. Chain, now I'm on chain three. One, two, three. Skip three on the bottom. One, two, three. And in the fourth chain, start the double crochet repeat again. So that's one, go to the next one, two, and three. There we go, that's what you have. Now, on the schematic, everyone gets six of these. This is the repeat, the double crochets. Everyone will get six. I'm just going to do, well, should I do, I'll do four, just for this little sample. I don't want to waste time doing another six. Okay, so I chain three, and then I skip three on the bottom, one, two, three, and then, of course, do the double crochets again. Oops, lost my place, one, two, three, right here. This yarn was really soft, I'm telling you, that was just a shock to me. <laughs> because I have bought some of the other mandala, the, I guess it's the size three weight. And I have not used it on anything. It it I, I can't remember. I don't know, but it feels like there is there wool in it. It feels funny, you know. I, I can't stand that feel. I, I don't like that feeling. So I have just left it over in the bag. So I was shocked when I bought this. <laughs> so there's uh, on my sample. I have four repeats. You've got to work six. And when you get to the last repeat, number six for you. All right. I need to start the center back. 
So I will chain one, skip one on the bottom. That's a little separation. And I start filling in with however many double crochets your center back calls for. My number is 38. So I'm just going to... I don't know if I have enough room to do all 38 on mine. I'll just do... I'll just do... This is just the sample of practice. Pull up some yarn. See, you're just making double crochets. But you can see we have a border. And then you have your repeats. And now we're working the center back. So let's just see how many I can work. I, I have to make sure I have some to, so I can work the neck. Believe it or not, we have all those days last this. Uh, well, this week and last weekend and last week too, we were up to 97 just about every day. 90, 90 something, 97. Today we had 84 and it felt like, <laughs> like the world had just completely changed. Just that drop in, in the, in degrees, and especially the humidity. And there was, um, there was a wind. I don't know where the wind came from, but, you know, the trees, and I could feel the the wind coming through the window. I thought, my gosh, what a difference. A week or a few days or drop in the temperature makes. Just in time for us to do this really pretty crochet sweater. So I'm just pretending that you know I'm just talking and I'm just going over and see I don't even know how many I have I want enough so when I get up to the little section for the neck I can show you how we're going to work the neck area I'll do just all right and see and all the while I'm watching this side of my chain but I can tell I have enough see because I have a long chain and if I looked over there and I only saw look that many left I'd be like, oh no, I'm going to run out. <laughs> well, you know, then I'd have to start all over. And uh, another reason for the long chain, you know, when you're designing or you, you know, changing things, you know, you don't know how many extra chains you might need to change that particular um, step in the design, that particular design feature. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop and count and see what I have. I'm just showing you how the center back looks. It's just a long row of double crochet. So I come here, I'm going to count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Oh, gosh, I got a lot. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Oh, I may as well. I think I can get it. 30. 32. That's 32. Well, I'll stop at 32. That'll be good for this practice. Okay, so there's that. Now watch. You finish your number of whatever your number is in the back. My real number is 38, but I'm not going to waste going all the way to 38. All right. I want to stop, so I have to go back and do exactly what I did here to start. I chain one, skip one on the bottom, and I go back into three double crochets, just like that. One, two, three. Now chain three. One, two, three. Skip three on the bottom. One, two, three. And I'm back in business. Like I said, I just <clears throat> kind of thought, well, what would I do if I was just making a napkin? And this is what I would do. <laughs> this is a nap. This could easily be an napkin. Okay, like a little lapkin, maybe not a full napkin, but you know, something to put across your lap. 
you know, to give it to someone. Okay, chain three. One, two, three. Move on. Skip three. One, is it? One, two, three. Now I need to start the double crochets again because on your, on the schematic, you have six repeats of this. That's one, two, this would be the, go to the next chain. There's a three double crochets. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip through on the bottom, one, two, three. Three double crochets. Just like that. Hmm. Chain one, two, three. Skip through on the bottom. One, two, three. Until you have all the repeats. I'm doing only. Is how many am I doing? Go ahead and count. Oh, I'm only on the sample. I'm doing one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Alright, so on my sample, right here I start counting my repeats. There's that chain one space. Now here's a repeat. One, two, three, and four. So I see that, okay, and you'll say, all right, I'm at the end of my repeats, Jay. How do I stop the whole row? Alright. Just like we started here, you're going to do the exact same thing. So I chain one, skip one on the bottom. And I have three double crochets for the three stitch border, just like on the schematic. See, it's written out to help you visualize what you're doing. So now when I look at it, this is what you'll have. One, I, You'll have six, but I have one, two, three, four. I have all the double crochets that represent the center back from that space across. And then I have one, two, three, four, chain one, and I have the three double crochets. Easy peasy. This is row one, the right side. Now, row two is just as easy. Let me show you that. All right, so now we are on row two. Row two will be the back side. So when I get, when I finish the border, remember on Row one, this is the front. All right, I chain three. One, two, three. And I'm happy I have some chains left. <laughs> so I don't have to redo any of the work. <laughs> so now I turn the work, and as you can see, I am on row two, the wrong side. And this side, once I chain three and turn, then I'm going to start with a double crochet, right in the second double crochet. The first one is a chain and then double crochet and then stack another double crochet on top of this one so that I will continue the three stitch border. You see that? One, two, three. Right on top. Now, the difference on this row two that I have to do to make it fit, instead of chaining three to start, I have to chain four. I have to chain one over this chain one space and then three chains to, over these three double crochets to get to this large space right there. So all you have to remember on chain on row two, chain four when you start. One, two, three, four. Now I can go all the way over here to this large first large space and I'm going to put three double crochets in that space. One, two, and three. Just like that. So now you can see the long box right there. Now, once I put do the three double crochets, now I go back to chain three. One, two, three. Go over to the next large space. They're kind of they're staggered. So I do three double crochets. So now we're in business. Chain three. One, two, three. Go over to the next large space. I put three double crochets. See, so can I get a little yarn here? One, two, and three. Okay. Chain. Look ahead to see what, what do you need. Okay. All right. So, as I look ahead, I see that I have the last three double crochets, the last repeat, and that chain one space. 
So on row two, what do we do? We chain four. One, two, three. That's to get over these three double crochets. And then one more to get over that space. Four. And I go all the way to this first double crochet right there that starts the center back. Okay, so after I chain four, I go all the way across. On row two, the wrong side of the fabric, we have to work a chain four to keep a pattern. See? All right, so now I'm just going to work across. Let's see, can I get me some yarn here? Well, my, I think I'm tangled up in my camera. In my tripod. Okay, here we go. I'm free now. So let's see how quick I can go across so that I can uh, show you how once you get across. Just remember you're on row two, the back side, and we're going to mark it. We're going to mark the back side with a you know a contrasting yarn so that once you see that yarn, you know immediately. Not only are you on the back side, but you need to start with a chain four. That's how I'm, I remember. Okay, let's go across. Let's see if I'm getting close. So I don't have to turn off the camera. All right. There you go. Well, I could have just said I'll meet you on the other end. <laughs> I didn't realize I made that put on here. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to wear this. I haven't to wear it out. I've got, um, you know, um, this ombre uh, will look good. Uh, with some jeans or with a pretty uh, years ago I used to make uh, denim skirts I guess you'd call I guess it's kind of on the same line of what they call pencil skirts you know I was much slimmer then and it has a split in the back a little just a little small split you know not high or nothing but I thought man wouldn't that look great well not on me now but <laughs> If you're still working or something. But I could wear it with my little sweatpants. Or my uh, capri pants. You know the ones I bought at Cato. <laughs> Alright, so I see that I'm coming up. Look, I've worked the center back. Right? I hope I'm on camera. Alright, so but now I see that I'm coming up to the last double crochet there. And I need to get back into the lace pattern. And what does row 2 tell me? chain four so chain one two three four skip this chain one space go all the way to the large space and three double crochets one two let's see two and three sometimes you have to spread them out a little bit so that it'll lay flat then chain three one, two, three. Okay, now we're on a roll. You see, this is why I say this was so nice because it's only two rows and you I've already, you can memorize it in no time. One, two, three, just like you do an Afghan or granny square or okay, one, two, three. Now I go to this large space. One. Oops. Two and three. And how do I how do I end? I need to to chain to get over to this double crochet right there to skip that little space. I chain four because it's row two. One, two, two, three, four. Skip all the way over and do the last three double crochets that represent the border. One two and then the third one goes into the post just like that 
chain look, there's the border can you see it all right now chain three of course one two three and then you will of course get ready to turn the work and we'll be back on row one but before we turn i want to i want you to go ahead and do this it just makes it just saves so much time i got a piece of contrasting yarn i'm just going to stick it right in here somewhere on row two before i before i turn and that this way every time i see this yarn i know i'm on row two the wrong side where i need to chain four when i start and when i end i just pull it down there so now look row two now when i turn the work i'm back on the front and i'm on row one so you'll turn the work well i'm a tangle up mess here tonight on it <laughs> oh but I'm having so much fun. I'm so glad you came to visit me tonight or today, whenever you're watching it. There's that large space. When I turn the work and I'm back on chain on uh, row one, you just go down. If you kind of forget where you are, go down past this chain, go down to this row, and just read what you have. You can see after I do the chain, the three double crochets, there's a chain one space. So I chain one. Now I work three double crochets into this large space. One, two, and three. Pull it over a little bit so that you can see the chain one spaces will line up and the three double crochets will line up. All right, now go back into chain three. One, two, three. I work over. Three double crochets. Right in the next large space. Chain one, two, three. Go over. Three double crochets. Uh oh, let's see. Two. Oh, I had to cut. I had to tie my knot, yarn in a knot. Oh, I hate that. Let's see, one, two, oops, I think I need to trim some of that. Let me just trim a little bit of that. It's just practice, but I'm going to trim it just so that it won't get in the way so bad. All right, one, two, I need three. That's a little better. I'm trying to work it in here. All right, now chain three. One, two, three, go over two. This last you see that last space? It's a big one, but I need to put three double crochets because I looked down to this row here to see what was there. I have to stack three double crochets. One, two, three. Then I chain one because there's, I can see that chain one space. Chain one to make a chain one space. Now I'm back at the center back. Doing all, working all my double crochets across. I'll just work a few and then I'll stop. Okay, can you see? You will work all the way across the de this double crochet, the center back. Row one, when you get here, there's a chain one space right there. See, look to this row below. Chain one. And then three double crochets right above that one. Chain three and then three double crochets. You're working just the, exactly the same. Does that make sense? Does that help? I'm just going to slowly put it across so that you can see. Now, I'm going to work, you know, quite a few rows off camera so that I can get up just a... a I don't have much, uh, you know, I don't have much of the yarn left just scrap just a little ball here but I'll work a few inches so that I can we can pretend uh, that we're at the neck so that I can show you how to make separate this front see this is this is gonna go over the shoulder with a border see because we're gonna take out remember how many I'll show you how to take out the neck set aside the neck this will be one front and some lace the second front and some lace what do you think all right, I'm going to work off camera. I've given you the 
of a simple stitch, row one, row two. <sighs> Have fun. Don't let your coffee get too cold. If it if it's gotten cold, I'll go warm it. I'll go heat it up for you. <laughs> oh, I forgot what was in the oven. Let's see what were we making today. You know what? I've been eating a lot of uh, quiches. Uh, you know, I love spinach, but I just can't eat it fast enough, like in salads and things. So I got me a good recipe, or I, you know, kind of did my own little thing and made up, you know, added this, added that. And uh, so now I can have, like, quiche, like a spinach cheese with a little hint of meat or sausage or whatever for breakfast. And sometimes I'll even eat it for lunch, or if I don't cook that day, I can have it for, for my dinner at night with a glass of tea. So I have some zucchini. So while I'm working, I'm going to go to my computer and look up some recipes for how to make some kind of zucchini quiche or zucchini and cheese breakfast dish. <laughs> All right. So enjoy. See you in a little bit. Okay. I'm, I am back so that we can start to separate our uh, sweater but I need to make a note here there's a note just some um, just so that you can double check you know the fit and everything when you're first starting and you're working the back this is the simulates the back all right after you do a few rows if you'd like to go to the mirror and check when this now I'm stretching out it may not all be on camera but when it's stretched out like this okay and uh, you can just stand in the mirror and use the front of your body. This should be longer than your side across your front of your body and to your other side. You should have some uh, two or three inches kind of going past your side. So if your side comes across your front and you're measuring this up standing in the mirror and you're putting it around your waist or wherever, you should have about that much left. You should have it should it should not be from this actual edge to this edge. You want to have some left. So that's why we have certain numbers in the back for the double crochets. And uh, that's to give you ease. So you will have an ease of maybe two, maybe two inches or so. On this side, say if this is my body, my uh, side, then I'm gonna have maybe this much left. It's gonna overhang my side okay and then same thing on this side here's my body my side and I'm gonna have a little bit to kind of, so I didn't want you to think oh Jay when I measure this up this is hanging over it's a little longer should I go down a size no you want that so stick with that but that's a good way to go and just go to the mirror and measure it does not go from your side from this very edge you will have positive ease about an inch maybe even an inch and a half or two but it will be taken up. It won't. Uh, it won't look baggy. All right. So now let's get ready to uh, work on our neck and separate the two fronts. <coughs> All right. The first thing uh, we're going to do is to smaller sizes. Remember, it was 14 double crochets. We're going to set aside for the neck. All uh, my size and all the larger sizes, you need to set aside 16 stitches. So whatever you have in the center back, now I didn't have but 32 on this little sample. I just did 32. But you look on your, you know what you've got. Alright, now take 14, you know, count your number. So if you had 30, you would take 14 from 30. Whatever's left, you divide it and put, put half over here and half over here. You're going to mark off. 14 stitch, 14 double crochets. For my size, I would mark off, put a marker, and mark off 16 double crochets. In other words, I'd take 38, subtract 16. 16 from 38, whatever it is left. <laughs> I guess I should have the mesh. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. Okay. Let's, let's see if it comes out even. Yep. Okay. So on mine, 16 from 38 leaves me 22 stitches. Well, 22 divided in half is 11. So all I have to do is count in 11 from this edge, starting at this edge. 2, 4, you know, 11. And then on this edge, 2, 4, 11. Then put markers. 
that belongs to this to these uh, stitches then you should have the correct number left for the center neck or the center back so on my size I'd have 16 all right so on this one I have nine just like I said this is just a sample so I just did and I subtract and I had nine I subtracted 14 I left 14 stitches on this practice all right so when you decide you want how long you want your back and you say I'm ready to stop just stop on the right side row and we and work the lace over and then mark all just like said like we just shared and mark the neck just track the number and put a mark all right so now I'm on crochet let me see if I'm on camera here I'm going to crochet I'm on the right side because the back side is marked I'm going to crochet over to my marker and I want to start to work so that I can start working on this front this is the right front All right, so I get over, and you can always remember count twice. I go into that marker because it's marked, so I'm on, I, I should have nine. Two, four, six, eight, nine. All right, so I know I have the right number. This is the neck. This is the left side. We'll come back for the left side. We're just going to concentrate on the right side now. Chain three. One, two, three. Now I'm turning the work to the wrong side of the fabric. Okay. Now, all I have to do is start crocheting back to get, but I will get right back into batter. All right, but now we are going to decrease one stitch to give your neck one extra stitch on this side. And of course, when we get to the other side, we'll do the same. And this is all you're going to do just a regular crochet decrease. After I chain three and turn, I'm going into the next double crochet. I pull up a loop, stop. Okay. Go into the, um, wait a minute now, I don't forget, yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop, yarn over, go through the next double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop, you're going to have three loops on the hook, the original loop, and then I ran two stitches together, I'm going to double crochet it and pull it through all three, just like that. Let me do it again. I kind of messed it up. <laughs> okay. Chain three turn. There's that. Now, yarn over. Go through the next double crochet. Pull up a loop. Pull through two loops. Stop. Yarn over. Go through the next double crochet. Pull up a loop. Pull through two loops. Now, stop. Now, I have three loops on the hook. Is that better? Pull through all three. I have just decreased and added one more stitch to the neck. Oh, a little more. Yeah, like, well, it's a space. It's, it made the neck a little wider. Let's put it that way. Now I continue across the row doing the double crochet until I get over to the lace. So I just double crochet now. Over. Just like this oops I'm sorry this my dark this is all the yarn ahead of this and it's dark so I'm hoping that you can see this I hope I said I, I finally bought three cakes did I say I bought three cakes <coughs> I, I had to I just didn't want to have to run out and thank goodness I did. All right, so now when you count, you're going to have one less. Say if I had nine, so now I have eight. Two, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now I have eight, one less than the row below. And, but yet you can see the neck kind of opens up. All right, so now I'm on the wrong side, so I know I need to chain four. One, two, three three four and I'm going to work the lace pattern just like I was working three double crochets chain three two three pull me some more yarn after did you finally get it get a rhythm did you kind of like okay one two three Go over, 
and it really helps to have that little uh, contrasting yarn because you know to count off four. Okay, one, two, three, and I'm at the end, so I know I have to do four to get over all the way across to this edge. Get some yarn, and I do my three stitch border, and the last one has to go into the post to keep the edge straight. Just as we normal do our regular crocheting. Chain three. One, two, three. Turn the work. Alright, now I'm back on the right side. And now I will continue to work back and forth. Back and forth. Just remember when you get up to... Now let's see if I can go ahead and do it real quick. I want to show you how to connect on the other side. Just to remind you. Okay, so now I know I'm on the right side, so I need to chain one and then do three double crochets. One, two, and three. Chain three, one, two, three. Go to the next large space, three double crochets. Oops. One, two, three. Next space. Three double crochets. Keep going. One, two, three. Three double crochets. there two and three and I know I have to do a chain one to make a space and then start working the double crochets so let's just make sure I did have one I have a decrease one less and this is your front border as you come across. It's already built in. We were gonna we're gonna add more to give it a finished look, but this is a nice border. Already included. What do you think about that? And remember, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got to get in, in that last double crochet, don't. There's a double crochet there, seven, and then into the post. You have to seven, eight. Remember, I start mine started with nine, so I should have. See? So now look at the nice curve you're going to get for your neck. Instead of a 90 degree angle, it just kind of leans a little bit, and now we'll start working up, chain three, and turn the work. Make sure I have the right number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I feel like I kind of ran that one past. Like I, oh, I missed one. I see it. And I thought, oh, look, like I messed up there. Wait, I didn't. There it goes. It goes in here. Right there. Ah, this dark yarn. I hope it shows up on the camera. But the main thing is to go into the post, and the post is right there. Not. You know how to read your crochet to keep that nice straight edge. Okay, now chain one, two, two, three. Turn the work. Now I'm on the back side. I just start working the double crochets. Just like this. Pull some yarn. Okay, so now I've worked across, and then I continue on. This is on the wrong side, so I know I'm going to chain one, two, three, four. And I'm going right back into pattern, into the lace pattern. All right, I won't go all the way across. All right, because I want to look at this. So, there's the back side. See, it kind of 
gives a nice a nice little curve there and we've added one like a space all right so now let me show you how to connect on this side I always like to do that because sometimes it's confusing so I've got another ball of yarn you know you're gonna work this side down um, uh, down to match however long you work the front but remember the little uh, what was the last thing I just shared with you? you remember I said on crocheting sometimes you have to or knitting you may have to work a row or two more okay just so that you um, so it doesn't um, kind of pull up in the front I like to always go a, a row maybe one or two extra rows on the front to give good positive ease ease over your bust line so you'd work down to 20 or whatever you worked 18 or 16 inches down and then I'd go ahead and, and uh, work a couple of extra rows and then stop the yarn right there you don't have to tie it off just stop it because we need to come up here to this side and try to make a match all right so now here we go so I've got some yarn here I've got my mark right there this is the neck. I'm on the right side. Okay. Oh, let me ask, or let me do this. Note. I have to think of things as I do them. All right. Note. Do you remember when we did the? Um, let's see. Where the wildflowers? Those that did where the wildflower grow best. And I showed you a little trick that you need to pay attention anytime you go. We're working our up the back split for each front and over the shoulders and this is that's the only time I really try to manipulate the yarn in you know any other time I just go with the flow but I want you to look here say for instance you see how when we started working this one I had dark yarn that's all I have left <laughs> that's why you need the three cakes or if you are a larger size go ahead and get four cakes of this yarn because you will have to manipulate the yarn right here and I said okay so if you were working and the yarn is just doing what it does just working back and forth and then I start working this side and this side it has a lot more dark on it and you're going okay then you work down like I said stop you know work down so far and then stop and then go back up get the other cake now when you get ready to connect on this side make sure you're on the front side again on the right side you always pretend like you had just crocheted across that you didn't stop so whatever color you had on this shoulder as you were going across the front you need to manipulate the yarn either from that same cake or get a like I said one of the the extra cake you'll just have to unwind to you can it doesn't have to be exactly exact but it needs to be close so if I was starting on this side and I didn't have this little extra ball but I had a light color like this well that's not going to flow with that so I'd have to unwind <laughs> I'd have to unwind till I found the area but you see on this one, I, everything is dark. This was the last. But that's why one reason I bought the extra cake. I learned that a long time ago. That it's just not pleasing to the eye. Uh, I know when I first started using Noro yarn. You know, it just goes, it just does whatever. It, but it just, oh God. <laughs> it just drove me crazy. And then I just started doing what I knew to do. I don't care about anything else the yarn does what it does but when you get ready to go over the front over the neck over the shoulders you work that one side then when you get ready to do this side you need to manipulate the yarn so that it looks like you just came right on across in that same color variation and just keep and work down does that make sense that doesn't mean it's gonna match completely all the way down but this needs to it's just pleasing to the eye and it sets the front up really nice so I have some old yarn here I'm going to loop it I'm going to take my hook here's a stitch right here that I need to put my hook in because I've counted two four six eight that's number nine for me all right I just simply loop it over my hook like this I bring the, both yarns through I pull it through real tight then 
I drop my tail. Now some people work over their tail. You do whatever. Then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Now pull that tail tight. Pull everything tight. I chain three. Now I go right back into double crocheting over. Now I hadn't forgot, but it's on the second on the next row. So we have to double crochet over. Okay, keep going. All right, now I'm here. I'm on the right side, so I know I need to chain one because I can tear right away. I don't have that yarn. See, it helps. It, tell you, it just helps. So now I'll chain one, and then I'll do three double crochets, get right back in pattern. And that's the way it would look. If you had not stopped for the neck, you would have kept right on coming across. So now, not only are we in the same pattern in the lace, but you're working in the same color or close to it. One, two, two, three. You don't have a light color on this side and a dark on that one. <laughs> you go, what's wrong with your sweater? <laughs> you look like you, <laughs> like you need to walk crooked or something to get it to look right. Okay. So then I'll do three double crochets. I'll just go on and do it. One, two, three. Okay. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'll do like my, my friend Helene. I'll just make my own crocheting music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Elaine. I'm, uh, you got busted. <laughs> she was crocheting this beautiful, beautiful um, stitch, a scarf, and then she did a, a cow to match. Oh my gosh. But it was just so funny. She did her own sound. Okay, so I knew I had to chain one. Then I'll go over here. And do the little border. So doop do 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 do. I'm sorry I didn't recognize that song. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, now let's see what I have. Alright, so now I'm I'm in pattern. Chain three. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm loosey goosey tonight, aren't I? <laughs> I don't know, I just Oh, it was down to 84. It felt so good today. Or eight, it might have even been less. Chain three and turn the work. Now I'm on the wrong side. So now I'm going to work back. I thought, well, I haven't gone this far. I may as well just save the camera. Okay, I know on the wrong side, chain four. After I do the little three borders, one, two, three, four. I just skip all the way over to the large space. Please say I'm on camera. <laughs> oh, I got out today for some reason. I hadn't been out in so long. <laughs> so I went to the Walmart. I didn't buy any yarn or nothing there. I went to get just stuff, household stuff. And then I decided to go on to Hobby Lobby. I was going to go to Joanne's, but I can never keep the coupon dates right. That just makes me so mad. <laughs> the coupon date was last week. <laughs> you know, where you got the most bang for your bucks. So chain one, two, three. So I thought, I'll just go to Hobby Lobby. So I went over there. Lord knows I didn't need any yarn. <laughs> I had to sit there in my car and pray before I even went in the store. <laughs> and Lord, I just don't need any yarn. But, you know, I hadn't been out at my house and I hadn't bought anything. Because I have so much. All right. I'm coming up, chain, okay, one, two, three, four, to get over, see how easy, oops, to get over here, right there, and you know, if you go out, to just go to the store and then walk in and walk out, <laughs> so I did find some little yarn, it was just some of their basic yarn, our store, um, that, I can never remember when they have the big sales, you know, when they have all that. But I'm glad because I don't, I didn't need that that much yarn. All right, so now I'm coming up to where 
See? Where I made that decrease and I just work in it. Just. Oh, now we're on the other side. <laughs> I got to make the decrease. I'm coming up to where I need to make the decrease. Okay, now to make the decrease on this side, even though we're on the wrong side of the fabric. Okay, I stopped two double crochets before I get to the post. See, there's the post. That's why I did the chain three. All right, so I stopped two double crochets, yarn over, go into the first double crochet, pull a loop and go through two, stop. Yarn over, go through the next double crochet, pull up a loop, pull through two loops, stop. Now I have those three loops on the hook and I pull through all three, I have just decreased. But I still have to do a double crochet in this post to keep a nice front edge. Remember, this is going to be your front edge and you don't want it to look all crazy. <laughs> so you do have to do a regular crochet into the post. Two, two. Now I'm going to have a straight edge. Chain three. One, two, three. Turn the work. <laughs> I promise I have not drank it. <laughs> oh, well I did have a Coke. I felt myself getting... <laughs> Feeling funny, so I drank, uh, uh, you know, no sugar coat, you know, like a diet coat. All right, so now look. See, I always get excited when I get to this part. See how it just forms by taking out one, it just opens the neck up. See? But you still have a nice, now look, then you go back into pattern. Double crochet. Oh, I'm just having fun just fellowshipping with y'all tonight. For some reason, I just... Oh. Okay, I'm just going to work over the double crochets and then you know to go into the lace. All right. So I work all the way over to the double crochets. I'm on the right, so I right on the front, so I know I'd chain one and then I'd keep, keep going. But, let me get the mirror and see how it looks. Look at that. Look at that nice neck. Nice and clean. And then as you continue to work down the front, each front, this just stays straight. Every once in a while, though, check your numbers because sometimes you get to going fast and you forget, especially when the yarn gets dark like this, you forget to go into the post as you're working down. One time I saw that and I go, oh, man. And I pulled back a little bit. But check your numbers. You should have one less than when you start. If I started with nine, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See? Because I took one out. And I'd have the same thing on this side. But yet my uh, lace, I just continue staying in pattern. Work down one side for as long as you need to go till it matches the back. Like I said, if you did, or you can count the row. You know how I do easy count. You know, I go to maybe this edge. And I might count every double crochet, all these double crochets on the edge. Say if this was the back, well, this is represents the back. I'd start down here and I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And say if I had 16, say if, uh, or if I had 20, whatever it was, down the back, you know, up the, going up the back. All right, then naturally I want to have that same number coming down the front. In fact, this is something you could do. You know, if you're still kind of new at crocheting, you're still a little nervous about making a garment. You know, maybe, and I should have showed you this way before, but you know what, the very last, you know, the row where we started the neck, where we stopped. So, you would do this before that. You could take a little piece of yarn and put it right here to let you know where you stop counting and where you need to count. But another little trick too, if you would look, if you didn't notice, for new, you know, crocheters, you know, you can kind of, well, I, this is the best thing to do. Just to, wherever we said, okay, I want to stop and start working the neck, then put you a little piece of yarn. That way you can count up. You know, one, two, three, seventeen up. Then I'm gonna normal do seventeen down in the front. But I would go a couple extra on the front, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. That's gonna give you some bus ease. Not sloppy, 
just looks really nice. I just shared that on the on the honeysuckle and lace, and I hope everyone got it and and uh, saw how nice that gives you. A, the, it just makes the front look so nice, and it gives you, like I said, some bussies. Well, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to let you work. You're going to work your sweater now. I've shown you everything to do to go over each front, go up the back and go over each front, put your neck in, everything. So now there's just a lot of crocheting. I'm going to stop the video, and this is going to be part one, because I want to show you, when we come back, I want to show you the nice finish to put on in part two to be the finish we'll we'll have two fronts and then I'm going to show you how to come back and put your really nice edge and we're going to do the crab stitch again we're going to crochet backwards for those that didn't do the wildflower uh, where the wildflowers grow we crocheted backwards and put that nice okay but then I even have a surprise so you'll just have to stay tuned so now I'm gonna let this be part one of this uh, you know Jay's crochet the Babylon Brook lace sweater and then I will that will give you time to crochet and then I will come back with part two show you how to put the really nice finish and the surprise so enjoy yourself happy crocheting I know you're gonna love this I'm telling you I'm already thinking about doing another one <laughs> I'm serious. I started looking through some of my old yarn. Some of that old yarn. You remember when Joanne started have, bringing that meal in yarn? I mean, that's like five years ago. Do you know I still have a lot of that in bags? When they first started doing the meal in. I still have bags that I have never even touched. So I started looking through that to see if I maybe could find something. Maybe do another one. Well, alright. <laughs> it's getting towards the midnight hour. So I'm just going to wish you happy crocheting, and I'll be back with part two soon.